Oh no, a five on the river. Parlafus now at the dummy end of the straight. Look at this, Steamov makes a huge overbet. If he folds here, actually I will take my shirt off and run around the building. They say that in poker it's hard to make a pair. And if it's hard to make a pair, you can imagine how hard it is to make the nuts. Well, what doesn't seem as hard is making the second nuts when somebody else has the actual nuts. I can't help but feel there's slight hyperbole there, but either way, don't feel too bad, Joe. It's happened to all these people as well. And you know what else makes me feel better? Liking and subscribing, you should do it too. Hold it back around to Mika. And as deep as they are, it doesn't have to all go in before the flop. Mika just calls. And he is out of position. The flop is all hearts. Now it's going in. I have the, the light right in my eye, and, and I, I can't see the flops. Oh, for heaven's sake. Seriously? This light is right in my eye. Somebody get him his space glasses. All right. Mika checks. Somebody at least read him the flop. He's betting dark. Fair bet's 325,000. I'm guessing this is where it all goes in the middle. A lot of players aren't going to call out of that stack size. Mika does call. Interesting. Nine of spades on the turn. Especially since you can brick the turn, and then what do you do? Well, Mika checks a second time. And Ryan Fair checks behind. Wow, got a free card on the river, and he got there. It's a heart. The nut flush for Mika. The second nut flush for Fair. Mika checks it. Fair is going to let him check raise. Fair walks straight into the trap, betting 450,000. I think when Mika does check raise here, though, his hand is going to be fairly face up. Watch as the jaws of the trap spring shut. 1.1 million. This is either always the sickest bluff ever or the nuts. And on the final table bubble, I lean toward nuts. Then again, I think Ryan Fair is also leaning toward nuts, but more like the crazy kind, not the good kind like you want. I also think I probably would have bet more if I were Mecca. I think the min rays almost look stronger and maybe Fair will sense that. Fair calls and loses a huge pot to Joel Mika. Sort of a cold deck, sort of a bad call, really bad timing. Well, lenowski has got aces again. Call. No one believes button three bets, but he's gonna slow play and just call. And Drew has, has mucked the small blind. Ace nine suited for Yup van der Bygart in the big blind. Any chance he squeezes? With the suited ace and the odds he's getting in the pot, it's probably gonna call, but it wouldn't be a bad spot with Ben just calling on the button. How much of this took you to pass? I call. Maybe alarm bells are ringing that Ben didn't three bet. Didn't know he had a call button. And you call. Maybe he just wants to see a flop. And what a flop. Ace, nine, deuce with two clubs. Top set for Wilanowski. Top two pair for Vanden Bygart. And the flush draw for Jeffrey Hakim. Disastrous flop for everybody but Wilanowski. A Hollywood poker writer couldn't have scripted this cooler any better. 93,000. Is there any reason for Wilanowski to do anything but just flat here? One, two, three. 93. I'm so bad at this. Considering he has the board completely crushed, I like a flat call. It conceals the strength of his hand and it allows for opponents to make mistakes. 193. He is going to raise. He sticks 100,000 on top. So what does Yoop do with top two? Pristine opportunity to re-raise. He is out of position. He can't just flat call. He has to raise the price of admission. Show's about to get expensive. So he three bets to 530,000. He's stuck in about a third of his stack. Now, Hakeem can't call it all off with the flush draw. How much do you have behind? When Wolanowski gets a count, he may well think that Yuk van den Bygaard has committed himself to this part. And for that reason, he may stick him all in to risk no clubs. 
He has shoved on Van den Bijgaard. Ben announces re race all in. He looks disgusted. I'd, I'd be happy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Having committed a third of his chips, he's not meant to pass a hand this strong. Such a big hand, but it can beat anything. How do you put Wilanowski on a set here? Yup is clearly thinking Ben does not have a bluff in his range. Again, have aces. Again, have aces. He does have aces. That's so, that's so sick. He put aces in his range. Maybe it's because Wilanowski just called pre-flop that makes him think he does have aces. The first time ever that I don't really know what to do and I don't have a good plan. I guess. I hate myself. You will show if I fall? Talking all the time and now you're, you're saying, don't say anything. Interesting read. Oh. I'm just not gonna answer that question. No, I know. Makes you feel better though, I don't hate you. I'm sorry? I don't hate you. You said you hated yourself. I kinda like you. <laughs> I don't like myself. You has picked up on the fact that Ben has gone quiet. He's the chattiest man in poker, and suddenly he's gone as still as a statue. He's laid it down! He a release from his PR firm saying we're now to call him OG Kusis, and then he's got an album dropping in the spring. OG is raising from under the gun with Ace Queen. Ace King for Ludovic Gaelic. When you're the most aggressive guy at the table, you should really be three betting this, but against a guy with a perceived tight image and almost as many chips as you, just calling is fine too. Gaelic does just call in position. Curly Sadu's off on another wonder. Gonna take a little stretch. Kozlov calls as well with 8 7 in the big blind. Three way to the flop, which is all diamonds, jack high. Two. Everyone's got a diamond. Two of them are big, but only one of those people is a Gaelic. Action's been checked to Ludo. He bets 98,000, gets a fold from Kozlov. Karakusis, not folding. He calls with the nut flush draw. Brick on the turn. Karakusis checks a second time. Ludo bets again. 236,000. Two barrels now. Weird. I know he's semi bluffing, but it sort of goes against his pre flop slow play. Pre flop low variance, post flop high variance with a hand that's got a lot of showdown value. Once again, Karakusis calls. Karakusis is playing it perfectly, which, to be fair, is mostly to Ludo's credit. It's a diamond on the river. That's the nuts for Karakusis and the second nuts for Ludo. Action's been checked to Gaelic again. Sweet check by Karakusis. Ludo gonna do what Ludo do. He bets the better part of half a million. Karakusis just making sure there's no straight flush out there. All in. He shoves. He check raises all in. I love Karakusis' line till that moment. Aye, 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 aye. I think a smaller raise gets paid, a shove probably never. Tough to fold the second nuts. He does <laughs> fold! Yeah, buddy. Hey, son. Action on Andre de Oliveira. Under the gun he has. Ace nine. Raise. Makes it 4,200. Not a hand I'm gonna mess around with under the gun, but it's probably fine. Followed to bus. Five three. Nope. Followed to Owen Crow. Who's got kings? Usually a spot for a three bet, especially against under the gun. Crow just calls. And that's actually totally fine if you're not the type to three bet bluff much. Rounds the blinds. Tuzni in the small. Passes. Salinas in the big. Gives it up. So De Oliveira's in big, big trouble here. Wow, he flops quads! 
Snur. Check, check, and a check. He insta checks. Crow checks behind. Dolavera kind of needed to bet that flop. It may just end up being too suspect to check flop, then bet turn and river. 6,100. The good news for him is that he's up against the second nuts on a board where it's very difficult to have the first nuts. Crow calls. Dolavera has less than a pot size bet behind. A deuce on the river. Let's see how much the tuition is to attend Val U. Wow, he bets small, 8,300. Certainly small enough to get a call from a wide range. Owen's already got chips. Nah, but see, you suspect, Andre. You suspect. Crow calls. Ace in your face. Watch Check, this. Check so fast in the <laughs> flop, I knew he had it. Pull off is with queen eight here. He calls. Ah, limps in, okay. Dimov has eight ten of hearts. <coughs> yeah, just go ahead and touch the chips again with that hand. He checks his option. A 9-7 deuce flop, so Dimov's up and down. Parfus ahead for now with queen high. He bets 200k. Yeah, he seems kind of frustrated. Quick call from Dimov. A six on the turn. That's the straight for Dimov. Remember before I was saying Danny Parlafis is running good? Well, now he's running really, really bad. Action goes check, check. Oh, no. A five on the river. Parlafis now with the dummy end of the straight. He is running worse than the family from Honey Boo Boo. Wow. Look at this. Dimov makes a huge overbet. There was 680,000 in the middle. He's bet 1.2 million. I mean, Dimov has literally the only hand that Parlafis is losing to. I do not see him folding here. If he folds here, actually, I will take my shirt off and run around the building. How good can you run? Around the building with my shirt off. Better than the family from Honey Boo Boo. He's folded! All right, well, 